Armored Corps new recruits on a forced march in the footsteps of history. This was once the Burma Road. The recruits pass by the blackened remains of armored cars in the Bab el Wad, a salute to their predecessors, the armored fighters who forged a path and accompanied the convoys to besiege Jerusalem. The old fortress of Latrun looks out over the valley of Ayalon. Here Joshua smote the Amorites and Judah Maccabee defeated the Greek phalanx. And here the IDF fought its first bitter armored battle over this fortress. This is the site of the Armored Corps Monument, the commemorative home for the fallen, a tank museum and a place of assembly for Armored Corps units and the Corps' extended family. The site draws the siblings, the mothers and fathers, youngsters and tourists. Here stand the engines of war that threaten the existence of the state of Israel time and again. The steel relics have become museum exhibits. Opposite them stand the Israeli tanks which stopped their advance. I was exposed to a lot of tank lore at home. I went to Sinai many times to visit dad in the army. He was away from home much of the time. It's a sort of need for continuity. I didn't start my career in America like you, but in that first tank in line, the Sherman M3, I went out in it to my first war, the Sinai campaign. It served as the basis for the whole line of mostly IDF armored developments. A swan song and salute to the venerable Sherman tank before it joins the more than 150 armor exhibits at the Armored Corps Museum. Forever young. The Armored Corps has come a long way from the old Hotchkiss tank of the War of Independence through the Sherman and Centurion to the modern-day Merkava, the pride of Israel's defense industry. The steel may have changed shape, but the spirit remains the same. This tank takes me a long way back to the 16th of October 1973 during the Yom Kippur War, when it boarded the raft and led the first assault forces across the Suez Canal. When I tour the Latrun site and see hundreds of soldiers learning about their heritage, and from the tank, I also see hundreds of soldiers gathered here in this park. And again this morning, foreign delegations laid flower wreaths at the foot of the wall of names of the fallen soldiers in Israel's wars. I'm convinced that this place, the Armored Corps Memorial Site, is serving its function beyond our expectations. We are in the Tower of Tears. The tears and the man inside the tank and the steel are the mottos of commemoration of the Armor Corps Memorial Site. I think Liat was only seven when she came down to Sinai for the first time. She spent a lot of weekends on duty with me. She rode in jeeps. She once drank gasoline, mistaking it for soda pop, a true daughter of the tank corps. 
At a young age, I used to spend time here with my brother among the tanks, playing at tactical signals while our father, an Armour Corps officer, was attending his meetings. As children, we didn't understand the meaning of the signals. But now that I'm deputy commander of a company of Merkava 4 tanks on operational duty in the Gaza Strip, I know what each signal means. And I remember how it all began here at the Armored Corps Memorial Site. This place serves as a link for all those who served in the Armored Corps. A meeting place for multiple generations. Here's my son. My brother also served in the Armored Corps. Those who fought, those who survived, the names of friends who fell along the way. I feel like one big family. These are my two sons. <laughs> the name of each and every one of the fallen from the Armor Corps of Israel's wars is commemorated at the Armored Corps Monument. A multi-screen show conveying the awesome power of the Corps is shown regularly in the Merkava Auditorium. When I stand beside the wall of names behind me, I can feel its power. I would define the Armor Corps Memorial Site as another armored division. If you put together the fighting spirit of what this site commemorates, what it symbolizes, it's a force multiplier for the fighter with the most advanced tank that exists. This meaningful site is a force multiplier for us in the battlefield. In the education campus, soldiers and students live and breathe heritage, values and nature. In the Armored Units Park, individual divisional monuments pass on the legacy of the divisions and brigades in this magnificent flowering green surroundings. I believe this will become the top tourist attraction in Israel. It'll have our combat tradition. It's a beautiful spot on the way to Jerusalem. Everyone will stop to take a look, but it's most important for us, those who fought, and I hope it'll be as important for the state and people of Israel. It commemorates those to whom we owe our being here. The name, life story, and valor of each of the fallen soldiers are kept and commemorated in a computerized system. Here on this site, we are erecting the Armored Corps Monument, a memorial for the fallen, a testimonial to valor. We hope that Israel's citizens, young and old, that our new immigrants, guests, and tourists shall visit here to learn something of Israel's audacious spirit. Each year, 400,000 youth, adults, soldiers, and tourists visit the site. Yad Lashirion, the Armored Corps Memorial Site, regularly hosts memorial ceremonies and swearing-in ceremonies of the Corps' recruits. The tank and the serviceman are like matter and spirit. The tank is matter, responding to the fighter's touch. The fighter, whose indomitable spirit comes to the fore whenever Israel's fate is at stake. Mrs. Sarah Waspi, who lost her husband, Lieutenant Colonel Yoav Waspi, in the Yom Kippur War, and her son are known in the Peace for Galilee War, speaks on behalf of the bereaved families. 
Seasons change, rains pour down my window with my silent weeping over a son who did not return, a husband who did not return, the early love of marriage never seen by my son, my other children calling for their father to no avail. Life goes on. My ability to feel spring and autumn, the fruitfulness of the earth, a fresh blossoming, to know that the bulbs planted in autumn shall flower in the spring. This ability has been nurtured by the friendship and dedication of my dear ones and the extended Armored Corps family. It happened after the war, exactly 15 years ago, when the nurse came out of the delivery room and said, you've got a baby girl. She weighs four and a half pounds. I suddenly felt tears gather in my eyes. And for the first time since darkness fell upon me, I wanted to see so badly, to see my baby girl, after all the fears and doctors' forebodings on account of my wound. And tonight, she's celebrating with me and the whole family. Tonight, it's her birthday, already 15. But lately, when I'm all by myself, I often trace your features one by one in my mind. Your daughter's really something, people say, and I try to imagine your face. What's wrong with that? I'd like to see my little girl for just a moment. For just a moment. Just once, Lord. Once in 15 years. It's so little to ask. But it means so much to me. And after that, I could go on living with my blindness. Just once for only a fraction of a second, once and no more. It's so little to ask. Just once can't be too much. נתת לי את היופי, האור והשירים, נתתי לך את החירות, את טוב הנעורים, ולעולם לא אקבל את מה שלי לקח, ולא אוכל לך להשיב את מה שלי נתת. איתי מת מחייכת, איתי מת עצובה. כגוש חסרת, רוקמת אהבה קרובה ומתרחקת, חבויה כמו חידה, אבל הייתי ונשאר אחת ויחידה. במעמד זה הנכם נשבעים אמונים לצבא הגנה לישראל. אני נשבע! אני נשבע! אני נשבע! אני נשבע! אני נשבע! אני נשבע!